In this video I will show you three ways of dealing with harshness in mixing, mastering and on vocals. I got a question by Daniel on how I deal with harshness in mixing. You know harshness, those frequencies which will tear your eardrums in half. In this video I will show you how I handle harshness in mixing, mastering and on vocals so you can get better mixes. Before we start, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. And if you have a question, just put it in the comments below and I will answer them. Maybe even in a video like this one. Harshness is a sound which is associated with being piercing and annoying. With a vocal, it's usually around the sibilant area of a voice, so the T's and the S's. With instruments, it can be the mid-range and up. Where it happens depends on the sound, of course. In guitars, you can have it in the 3 to 7k range. With cymbals 7k and up, and I often hear it in analog synths, especially in these self-built boutique type of things. They have a tendency to harshness at times, in for instance sweeps, because there's not always a filtering or EQ going on in these. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is to use EQ to fix harshness. Grab any EQ which uses a variable Q or bandwidth setting. Then you go to the area where you think the harshness is and do a broad boost with that EQ. Also go a bit lower and higher than you think it is, just to be sure. You sweep around until you pinpoint the harshness and then narrow the cue and sweep some more to narrow it down. You continue until you really have found it, it will definitely stand out. After that, you dip the frequency you just boosted. Bring it back in or increase it a bit and always do a being by bypassing the EQ to hear if you're not overdoing it. Always check for more frequencies, guitars can easily have two or more going on. After you have done the dipping, apply a broad EQ boost over the entire area you just did the EQ dips to, to bring back some life. Again, always do a being and take breaks because you can overfocus on these frequencies. Use automation for dipping frequencies. With analog synths, for instance, these can and will be different at times. With guitar and vocals, it tends to stay in the same area. This method works well if you have harshness, which stays the same the whole time. You can also do automation to vary the amount of reduction, which makes you do the same thing as a dynamic EQ, which brings me to the next method. Method 2. Use dynamic processors. And with that I mean things like dynamic EQs, multiband compressors, multiband saturation and of course deessers. The basic method is the same as with the EQs. You pinpoint the frequencies where the harshness is with an EQ or in the plugin itself, but only now you will use a dynamic processor to handle the harshness. The benefit of using dynamic processors is that they use a threshold. So, after the harshness passes a certain threshold, the reduction will kick in. This will be more naturally sounding than an EQ dipping the entire time at a certain frequency, and only does its thing when it's needed. Different plugins do it differently. For instance, the dynamic EQ of Brainworks. The Brainworks DynaQ version 2 has the ability to set a max gain which limits the amount the plugin will DS, which is very handy. And the Wave Sibilance is more of a set and forget type of plugin to quickly DS something. And of course, the plugin Soothe 2, which is basically made for this kind of situation. Check out my review here. I like to use DSers on, of course, vocals, but also on overheads. DSs are really nice to tame harshness in simple crash hits and leave the rest untouched. So it leaves your overall drum balance intact. If you use a multiband compressor to tame harshness, you have to set which band the compressor will work in and you have more control over attack and release. You can choose to mute the frequency band you don't use. Always check for phase coherence with multiband compressors. More often than not, I noticed the phase can get reversed and this can throw off your mix. You can also use multiband saturation to tame harshness. The added benefit of this is that you will add harmonics to the area you want to reduce. So lowering that area with the added harmonics can soften the harshness. The third method I use is best suited for vocals only. And this is to go over the T's and S's in a vocal and lower them in volume. The harshness of vocals is unique because the T's and S's are more separate from the rest of the voice. It's restricted to high mid and high frequencies only. So you go over the vocals, find a harsh spot, cut it loose and lower its volume. This method works well with really severe harshness. I advise to cut it loose and do volume lowering on the audio clip. This way you can keep the normal leveling for the mix. 
You can always add one or two of the other methods after this to really smoothen things out. And here is how I pinpoint the exact cause of harshness in a mix. When I have a mix and I notice harshness, I simply go to the master bus of the mix. I'll add an EQ and pinpoint the harsh frequencies like I told in my first method. Then I'll mute one track at a time until I find the tracks which cause the harshness. So mute and then unmute. Harshness does not have to be on one track, it can be on more tracks. If you have a vocal which is a bit harsh around 7kHz and a snare drum button track has the same issue, both will increase the overall harshness. So maybe only reducing one of them will be enough or just dipping the snare track on the same spot the vocal harshness happens will do. Try and experiment. I hope my methods will help you improve your mixes. You can check out more mixing tips in the videos here. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I will answer them and maybe even make a video about it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!